Hey, congratulations if you've made it this far and um, well done. I know that uh, rigging tutorials aren't the most exciting things to sit through, but uh, it should pay dividends in the end. Um, so uh, with that in mind, there's uh, one last thing to do, which is to create squash and stretch functionality on this character. And because the character can't squash and stretch at the same time, um, I'm going to have one control switch between either state. So I can select the body control and I'm going to uh, go up to edit, add a tribute and create a control called squash and stretch and give it a minimum of minus one and a maximum of one with the default state of zero and I'm going to keep it as a float and click add um, and I could just get rid of the scale because we're not doing any scaling um, block and hide those um, and then next off I need a squash and a stretch state so um, I'm going to select the geometry that I want to uh, squash and stretch uh, the eyes and the eyelids and the body um, I'm going to keep the uh, tail with some volume and then go up to deform and click lattice um, and I'm going to have divisions of 232 two, nothing too complicated and I'm going to check on group base and nice together and click apply um, and then I'm going to select the lattice points and squash the mesh down like that and as the mesh squashes, I guess you'd expect it to displace a little bit, um, maybe a little bit more, just to exaggerate it, um, there we go, you can see the mouth which is cool, um, yeah so that's the squash state pretty much. Um, and we'll fix the tail in a bit. Uh, so then I'm going to select the body mesh again, uh, go to inputs, uh, FFD, and on the envelope I'm going to take that back down to zero to get back to our default mesh. Then select the same uh, geometry again, the eyes and the eyelid and the body, and create another mesh and this is going to be our stretch state so i'm going to take these and stretch these a little possibly bring them in um stretch that up as if it's sort of projecting away from its last point of impact um and maybe take it in a little bit not too much because otherwise the tail detaches. Um, okay, that's our stretch state for now. We can always go back and edit it if I want to take things further. Um, and then next up, I'm going to. I'm just going to group these and call that deformers, and then uh, put that underneath bouncing ball. Um, and then I'm going to use the uh, node editor to uh, link the control and the two states. So I'm going to go to window and node editor. Uh, excuse me, I just need to take a drink. Excuse me. And um, going to add in the uh, body control. There we go, and select the deformer. No, the actual deformer there. That's select the output. That's one output there, a 52, and I need a 51. Somewhere, where's it gone? Oh, I put it there, 51, and 
bring that one in there it is underneath there okay so I'll just expand that now so see what's going on um, do we need shapes oh, I've got shapes clicked off they're not shapes they're nodes so um, you can expand these by the way by clicking one two three uh, that's uh, might be a little better than double tapping them sometimes I end up triple and quadruple tapping them um, but anyway um, let's get rid of those put those over here so uh, FFD1 was our squash so I'm going to rename these and that was stretch and I'm going to create um, now there, there is a problem in that the uh, envelopes of our squash and our stretch deformers go from 0 and 1 so we need to create some nodes that um, change the output of the body control and also clamp it between a range so um, the first things first is to create a clamp did that actually create a clamp let me see no nope, I got the jitters let's try that again create node clamp there we go and press 3 to expand that and uh, I'm going to set the range of the clamp um, let's minimize that I need to select the clamp so let's minimize that and I'm going to select the set the range of minimum R to minus 1 and maximum R to, zip, to 0 so that will be our squash because that will go from minus 1 to 0 and then our stretch will be the G channel and G will be 0 and its maximum will be 1 so input R will be our squash and input G will be our stretch so I'm going to input R will be our squash and input G will be our stretch um, now our next problem or my next problem is that um, if um, um, what is my next problem um, if I link these up quickly so output R will go to squash and output G will go to stretch you should see that if we slide between the two squash doesn't work but stretch does and there's a reason for that is because as we're outputting from output R it's giving a value of um, squash is giving a value of minus one where the squash envelope is expecting a range of zero and one so what I need to do in order to correct that is um, I'm going to multiply that by a negative value so it gives uh, effectively the reverse of minus one which should be one so I'm going to put output R I'm going to create a multiply divide node and put output R into input 1x and then I'm going to go here and change input 2x to minus 1 and then link up output x into our squash envelope like that and that should mean that our squash now squashes and our stretch stretches cool 
Okay, and now I'm going to take the deformers and I'm going to group them underneath the body control, which should mean that they follow the character around. And then I'm going to turn the visibility off for them so we don't ever see them. And last of all, I'm just going to fix this problem with the floating tail. So um, I'm going to fix it once again with nodes. I think the easy win would be to do it with um, set driven keys or expressions, but uh, it's good to um, get a understanding of how nodes work. So I'm going to turn on joints like that and then I'm going to select the tail control and I'm going to add uh, a point constraint with maintain offset uh, clicks on so now the tail control um, uh, uses transforms to um, move the hierarchy around um, and then I'm going to click up and select its buffer um, and then I'm going to take the node editor and I'm going to add that buffer into our graph. Um, so what have we got? We've got the output of our envelope, of our squash envelope, which is um, uh, zero when we want the buffer to be at 10, and we've got um, uh, we've got one for the envelope when we want our buffer to go down to um, go down to minus 10. No, sorry. Go down to zero. Um, I'm just going to fix that dodgy bit of skinning. So quickly I'm going to select uh, these vertices. Uh, select the mesh, press F8 to go into component mode, select the vertices and go to windows, go to um, component editor and smooth skins and I'm going to go to tail bind joint 01, click 1 there to solidly weight those to first joint. So now should follow those. Brilliant. Okay, so what was I saying? Yeah, it needs to go from minus 10 to it needs to go from 10 to 0. So I'm going to um, take the envelope and I'm going to create a reverse node. And the um, feature of a reverse node is that it will automatically give a value of 1 when something is um, when it's on its input. So if even if its input is 0, it's going to give a value of 1. And I'm just going to test that by putting in the output into um, translate y like that and you can see that the um, buffer node is zero um, because our envelope is because our envelope here is at one this <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry if I'm not explaining this as concisely as, as possible, but um, it does make sense. 
but the problem now is that our um, envelope is at zero, uh, which should be now outputting the one, and we need to multiply that one to get it up to 10. So what I'm gonna do is cut that connection there and then create a multiply divide node and it's just stuck it behind another node which is fabulous um, so output x is going to be times by 10 so let's put that. multiply input 1x by 10 in input 2x and then put the output into translate y and then our tail should be back into its default state so now if i go minus in the squash the tail will follow it down like that um, and because it's the buffer we can still control the, uh, the tail itself Cool, okay then, so that's that for that f um, functionality. Um, I hasten to add that if I wasn't um, recording myself doing this, I might spend a little more time, um, uh, you know, kind of smoothing this out and making it deform a little better and a little more intuitively but this the theory is you know is still solid that's that's how I would uh, connect things up and uh, you know that's that's rigging it's just how far do you want to take it and how elaborately do you want to do it so last of all I'm going to turn the joints off like that and then uh, just make sure that all the uh, controls are selected and that there's no strange def deformation and um, oh that's our pivot joint like that so then we won't need translation or scale so I can go through the rig and lock and hide uh, channels that we're not going to use all right brilliant so uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. That's uh, bouncing ball rig. Great, thanks. <laughs>